morning, 100 days, 100 days of signs, wonders, and miracles. Thanks for joining me on my morning prayer walk, watching the moon set and the sun is about to rise. Once upon a time, thousands and thousands of years ago, there was a young man and a young woman. They loved each other. They had the whole world to themselves. They were blessed by Almighty God. And then the Bible says that when God created Adam and Eve, God gave them power and authority over all things. I love the King James Version of Genesis chapter 1, where it says they were given dominion over all of the world. The devil became active in this story and that temptation and deception led Adam and Eve to disobedience. I met Gibson Ranch this morning and there's a lot of animals behind these fences. They're all locked up. They have latches and they require keys to get in. The Bible says because of the deception of the devil and Adam and Eve believing the lie, they disobeyed God and they were expelled. They lost the keys to the gate. They had power and authority and dominion over all things, but they lost it all. They lost the keys. Have you ever lost your keys? I once knew a person that had a brand new Mercedes. They were so proud of it. It cost a lot of money and it was brand new. But, well, they were talking to me. They realized when they went to show me the car that they had lost their keys. That's what happened to Adam and Eve. They lost the keys to the kingdom. Fast forward to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16. We read of Peter being asked by Christ, Who do you say that I am? Thou art Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus responded by saying, Upon the confession of your faith, I will build my church, and I will give you the keys to the kingdom. Look at this verse very carefully in Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. First of all, Jesus says, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's King James language. Go back to the story of Genesis and it was the devil that caused the disobedience in the garden, losing the keys. Now Jesus is saying to Peter, because you believe and you've made this confession of faith, I am going to build my church and the devil is not going to have any power, any authority at all in the story. I will build my church and the gates of hell. In other words, the devil will not prevail against the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, the church. Furthermore, Jesus said, I am going to give to you the keys to the kingdom. That means he is returning the keys that were lost by Adam and Eve. I'm going to give you power. I'm going to give you authority. You're going to be able to do signs, wonders, and miracles through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he explains how that works. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now, those are King James words, and we don't need to go to the Latin, the Greek, or the Hebrew to understand it but we do need to understand these two important words. In the days of King James, the language of binding and loosing were very common. Today, not so much. Most people understand what it is to bind. To bind means to lock up. Yes, to lock up. 
The Bible tells us in the book of Revelations, chapter 19 and chapter 20, when Jesus returns for the second coming, the devil will be locked up in the abyss. Later, he'll be thrown into the eternal lake of fire. To lock up means that you bind in the power of the name of Jesus. In other words, each time Jesus dealt in the Gospels as it's recorded with someone that was demon-possessed, there was no dialogue. He would tell the devil to shut up. He would not answer or have a conversation with the devil. Kind of like the story in Daniel when Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. The next morning, the king said, how did you survive? And he said, God shut the mouth of the lion. And that's what happens. God shuts the mouth of the demons or the devil. Do you know that you've been given the keys to the kingdom, and what you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. You now have the power and the authority and the dominion to rule and reign in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ over all darkness. And when Jesus said to a demon, get out of this person, the demon fled. Later in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, when the apostles ministered like Paul in Philippi, he would cast a demon out of a little girl that was demon-possessed. You have the keys of the kingdom to bind darkness. Well, what does it mean to loose? Well, it turns out this gate has a lock on it, and we've been given the keys to the kingdom to walk over to this gate, this latch, and unlock it. You probably have a, a, a gate at home for your backyard and it has a lock or a latch. You have the power to unlock it. I would say you would release the latch that you could come and go. To unlock in the same spiritual dimension that you have the power in the name of Jesus to bind darkness, you have the power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to release heaven. Just like in the Old Testament, heaven opened up and God released manna from heaven. Just like in the book of Acts, Peter and John released heaven upon a man that was lame and he could walk by the power of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have been given the keys to the kingdom. You have been given the right to bind darkness and to release the light, to bind the work and the power of the demonic spirits in our world today, the work of the flesh, the work of the world, and you have the power and you have the authority to speak in the name of Jesus, that there would be light, that there would be power for healing, signs, wonders, and miracles. In our staff offices, we use a keyless system. We're so busy, we don't want to walk around carrying keys in our pockets, especially on a Sunday morning. So we have a keyless system. It's the same power and the same authority. You just touch it and it unlocks. Kind of reminds me of the story of the gospel in John chapter 20 when Jesus had the first keyless system and he walked through the door where the apostles were meeting. He would breathe upon them and say, receive the Holy Spirit. Father, I bow my heart on this Sunday morning and I receive your spirit within my heart. Lord, I bind the power of violence and hate, unforgiveness and bitterness, rage and anger, violence. I bind it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I release kindness, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness. I release joy and happiness. I release peace. I release the love of Almighty God. 
in the power of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks for joining me on my morning prayer walk out here at Gibson Ranch. I just watched the sun go down. I need to get home and change and well, I hope to see in church this morning. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'll be there at 9 and 11 a.m. We will be studying signs, wonders, and miracles. I want to close today by reminding you that God truly does want to release light into each one of our lives. Remember in the book of Numbers, chapter 6, how God spoke that when you pray over my people, pray just like this. I'll pray it as we watch together the sun. It's about to come, and I want you to ponder these words from Numbers chapter 6. Oh, Lord, bless your people today, I pray. Keep, keep each and every one safe, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Let your face shine upon their family and their life. Give them health, I pray. Oh, God, no matter what path or trail or road or highway they're on, Almighty God, I pray that your grace would go before them every step of the way. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, as your face shines upon each and every one, that you would bless them and that you would fill them with the peace of Almighty God in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You be blessed today. I'm going to watch the sun come up as I walk around the lake at Gibson Ranch. I'll see you this morning at 9 or 11 a.m. at church in Jesus' name.